Hi, Mom. Hi, honey. Hey, um, I know you don't have a computer, but uh, I'm getting torn up uh, online by, like, powerful elected female politicians. They're calling me. <laughs> I'm sorry. What are you sorry, laughing but... at? Huh? What are you laughing at? <laughs> because, I, because I think they're, I, I, I don't know if I should say that to you. Go ahead. But I think most of these elected quote unquote women stand in the majority if they can't define what a woman is, and yet when it, it suits their needs, they claim it. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, not to, not to worry. I I might have called them a bad word, and you know when Ooh. I when I was growing up and I called you a bad word, you put soap in my mouth or spanked me with a wooden spoon. I mean, what? Oh, well, I have to tell you, if if I, I could correct you. Uh, if, if you did those things, it was not to my face. I, I would have to say, uh, growing up, you're pretty respectful. Well, I appreciate and, and that, Mom. You, you know, I mean, I feel I was raised by a strong woman, and you know, I I think I know how to hang out with strong women because of you. But um, you know, you want to know what I said? Sure. It's bothering you. Yeah, I would like to. I said, I'll see you next Tuesday. Okay. That's a euphemism for um, cunt. Oh, never like that word. Mm. But, um, yeah. hey, in the grand scheme of things, look, look at the language we use now. So that means what? It's another four-letter word, yeah? Yeah. I, I call guys cunts, too. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm not quite sure. I, I don't like manufactured rage. It, it kind of diminishes the real stuff. I mean, isn't it like if, if you're lousy at what you do, you're lousy at what you do, and it doesn't matter what's in your pants? I think I said that earlier, honey, but I have a way of going in circles and circles. Yeah, um, sometimes you get there because you like the tag woman, right? And then you get up there and you want to play with the big boys. And uh, your merit is the fact that you you fob the fact you're a woman. Well, you can be a woman and very ill qualified, just like men. Uh, just, you want to play with the big boys and take the falls that they do. And as a matter of fact, I have heard men referred to in very, very disparaging ways um, that would make the cunt word uh, look like another four-letter word. That's very nice. I, I just don't care for this stuff, honey, and, and, and I'm truly at my age just sick and damn tired of it. You are a good man. You have always been very kind to me and very respectful from the time you were young, and I'm sure behind my back, like most kids, um, not so much. <laughs> but uh, that's, a, that's a different story. No, you're a good man. Appreciate you saying that, Mom. So I guess no, I sound like a typical mother, but you are a very good man, Charlie, and you have taken very good care of me through the years, and I I am very grateful. And I appreciate your endorsement, Mom, and I love you. And in the name of the family, I'm not going to apologize. Fuck them. Well, you must do what you feel is adequate, honey, and find your own reasons for doing it. I'm sorry, this is one I I, I don't like it. It irritates, sometimes angers me. Uh, you have to do what you feel is right, but I, I quite frankly think that uh, they like to throw up the tempest in a teapot, and it just depends on do you want to drink their tea. Nah, I don't. Okay, Mom, I love you. I'll see you for Thanksgiving. I love you, my son. Stay home and stay put. It's a holiday, and just eat a lot of turkey and watch TV. I hate turkey. You know that. I'm not fond of it either, but nonetheless... Um, Eat a lot of stuffing. Remember, we were so broke growing up, like uh, you used the bed crumbs for the stuffing. Remember? I did what? <laughs> Bye, Mom. Goodbye, sweetheart. Live from downtown Detroit, it's the No Bullshit News Hour with my main man, Charlie LaDuff. And Karen Dumas. Na 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 na
just a break it Dub or bullshit. Dub or bullshit. Well, you know, when it rains, the power goes out. And when the power goes out, the internet goes out. When the internet goes out, I call my friend Matt and Bernie at XG Service Group. Look at Bernie here on his hands and knees, giving it everything he's got. Look at that man crack. So busy, he forgot to wear a belt. There's Matt right there getting the board together. That's 734-245-4100 if you need Matt and Bernie to come take care of your voice over internet your security cameras off campus access control wi-fi and cameras for homes and business they'll design it for you you got restaurants they do drive through systems railroad cameras for public safety total wireless camera systems for your home and business yeah that's right call xg services at 734-245-4100 adr consultants experience overseeing more than a quarter billion dollar in public and construction projects since the turn of the century they're competent if you want to reduce your costs and increase your bottom line you want to cut the red tape you're going to need somebody that knows how to navigate it that would be adr consultants in procurement and government compliance and information technology adr smart get the job done right on time on budget 248-318-9424 call barry ellen tuck for a free consultation and thank you mom for that wonderful endorsement None of y'all hold a candle to her. Hear me? Period. That's it. I'm not scared of your bullshit. Uh, as you expect from this program, it's huge. Joining us later in the program is former Congressman Pete Meyer, who is now running for United States Senate. That makes three out of the four big candidates that have appeared on the show, and you know, doesn't have the guts to show up. <laughs> Everyone's uh, asked. We also have... Um, the Alliance analysis from the No Bullshit News Hours uh, director of sports and scouting, Joey Buns. But uh, first, how are we going to do this, man? Are we going to roll this tape first? I think we should roll the tape first. All right. Uh, somebody trying to make some money off my back. Here is a no name senator from my mother's district last week mentioning me, not by name, on the Senate floor. Got oodles of views. It's the view Rachel Maddow crowd. Mm, she's raising money off it now. They all seem to do this. Let's play the tape. Michigan voters elected women to run our state. Whitmer, Nestle, Benson. And the Democratic Caucus of the Michigan Senate for the first time in history is led by a woman and has more women than men. I understand this fact may rankle insecure men like the former Detroit News employee who, lacking control of his emotions, called the Attorney General the C word and got himself fired. What this man and friends need to understand moving forward is that women aren't putting up with this crap anymore. And we literally don't have time to coddle members of the He Man Woman Haters Club or whatever it is in someone that would make them say such a thing out loud. Or make someone like the Senator from the 3rd District to be so obsessed with women on vacation. We've got things to do. Like, run the state of Michigan. <laughs> Let me just say something here. The boss is the boss. The chief is the chief. The attorney general is the head lawman. And it doesn't matter a lick what genitalia they're toting around. But there's one thing they all have in common. Every boss and every elected official has an asshole. And it's become apparent to me that there are too many political bosses in Lansing who are in need of an enema. Take the case of that backbencher in the Michigan State Senate, a woman of little renown or oratorial sophistication. She gave me that shout out on Capitol floor last week during the waning hours of the legislative session. It was my second, my second mention of the day, yeah. which triggered a torrent of comments on social media, mostly in my favor. They can't get enough of me in Lansing these days. I'd like to thank the senator for that. Now, as a matter of decorum, the senator did not specifically mention my name. And as a matter of equanimity, I shall do the same. However, it wasn't hard to decipher who she was speaking of. Madam Backbencher weakly characterized me as a card-carrying member of the good old boys' woman haters club after my 
colorful call out of the foibles, the failings, and the fibbings of the ruling class of Michigan, who at this moment happen to be Democrats and who happen to be women. See you next Tuesday. The junior senator must not be familiar with my work since the list of my criticisms of those with the XY chromosomes is a long one. It includes former county executives, mayors, judges, and chiefs of police. I once referred to former Governor Rick Snyder as a cocksucker for his cowardly response to the Flint mass water poisoning. No one said a word then. See, when you're the boss and you're in the wrong, you can expect a spanking from me. I've never covered state politics much. Apparently, the privileged of Lansing are accustomed to pampering from the political press. But from my point of view, if you're a dude or a chick and you suck, then you suck. And I'm going to say it. Now, in her floor speech, the junior senator took issue with my criticism of her pal, Attorney General Dana Nessel. Nessel has been a disaster by any measure. Just ask the people of Flint or Benton Harbor or the students of Lansing. At issue last week was Nessel's exotic vacation to the island's Turks and Caicos earlier this year. According to the junior senator, men like me think powerful women are not entitled to so well-earned R&R. But nothing could be further from the truth. Rather, I take exception to elected representatives accepting outrageous junkets from special interests. In the case of Nessel, she vacationed with a prominent Traverse City attorney in an, wait for this, $8,629.25 per night penthouse overlooking the azure waters of Grace Bay. How do I know that? Because the concierge at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel told me so. The concierge also told me that the tab was picked up by the attorney's law firm. Now, Nessel and her attorney pal insist that Nessel reimbursed her fair share, but have yet to provide proof. Imagine if that's even true. The attorney general of Michigan cutting a check to a prominent law firm for a tropical island getaway. <laughs> it reeks of Clarence Thomas. The senator posted her speech, which got a lot of views. Now she's using it to raise political money. Governor Gretsch did the same thing the last time around. Again, these gals all want a piece of La Duff. Curious, I took a glancing look at the junior senator's campaign filings. Mm -hmm. What the backbencher failed to mention in her speech is that the very same attorney who picked up Nestle's tab is one of the single largest individual contributors to the senator herself. Oh, wow. In the interest of transparency, the senator might want to mention that. Also among the senator's biggest individual contributors is a snitch from the swamp of Wayne County politics, a man who was caught up in a federal car theft sting. I wrote about him and his political connections too. And all the principal players and that crapacious craper had penises, I presume. <laughs> Nobody then said a word. The senator ought to return the money. Now, speaking of Wayne County swamps, my mother lives in the senator's district near a filthy river. There's no movement to clean it up or to shoo away the drug fiends who congregate there under a bridge, shoot drugs, defecate, and burn fires. The dope fiends regularly break into nearby businesses. My mother calls, but nothing ever happens. The roads in the senator's district are a disaster. Moreover, more than half of the students at the nearby high school are below grade level in math and reading. The power goes out of my mother's house whenever the wind blows. What happens then? The senator accepts oodles more from DTE, but things continue to worsen. My mother is not happy with her senator, and neither are her lady friends who do lunch. They've all written her name down. Turks and Caicos is the least of Boss Nestle's problems and should be the least of this junior senator's concerns. There is the matter of the mushrooming 
blockbuster criminal case involving elder abuse and other high-ranking Democratic officials. The junior senator is now on the record as not giving a flying flip about our most vulnerable women. There are storm clouds on the horizon for these political bosses. And everybody in the junior senator's district knows what happens when the sky starts to darken. The lights soon go out. We'll be back after this. No BS News Hour brought to you by Legacy Partners Insurance. Do what we've all done here. Call them, 586-209-4106. They will shop for a better insurance rate for you. You will pay less and get more coverage for your home, your car, your motorcycle, your camper, your vacation cottage, all of it. They'll even help you with life insurance and Medicare. Call Legacy Insurance, 586-209-4106. Have them wrap their arms around you. Be covered, be safe. This message of Uplift is brought to you by business and personal wealth advisor, Luke Nowacki, who reminds you that what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, but never enter the kingdom of God. But while you're waiting, Nowacki wants you to remember that overreaction is not a sound financial strategy. So call Luke Nowacki at 248-663-4748 for sound financial advice. We're back, right? Okay, guess what we have right here? Who's that? Former Congressman Peter Meyer, no S, Peter <laughs> Meyer. Not Fords, not Myers. Um, running for Senate. It's good to see you. Why don't you just get a real job, man? Why you can be, always be running for... Because in a real job, people will like say nice things to you, right? And I like I you you I've lost that edge. I, I forget what it was like, and I, I miss that feeling of no matter where somebody's coming from, always giving them a reason to uh, to slug you. You know, you're looking for some fun. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's let's do this real quick. Who yeah. is Peter Meyer? Let let me yeah, sure. I, I put something together yeah. here. You know, I, oh, we know each other. Sharpie edits. Yeah. Peter Meyer, Congressman Peter Meyer, Republican from Grand Rapids, mm. uh, accepted the outcome of the 2020 election said no in fact it wasn't fraudulent that first to, mistake to, first mistake but it was the truth mm -hmm. are you now telling me telling the truth is a mistake sir oh, i meant politics no telling the truth in politics is a mistake it, it shouldn't be we shouldn't accept that i don't accept that do we have your word if the great people of the great state of michigan send you to washington that you continue to speak the truth as you know it i not to be oh like, look at Washington. that got him no, got i was him gonna tell like that no i don't know tell, I'm tell, tell a lie the cherry tree no yeah i mean i, I got nothing to lose on that front right okay now no. congressman peter meyer voted to impeach trump mm -hmm. number two yeah. congressman peter meyer voted to provide the ukrainian government with billions of dollars i did okay congressman peter meyer voted for a federal law in codifying same-sex marriage mm-hmm Congressman Peter Meyer believes in global warming is created by human activity. I do. Congressman Peter Meyer was one of 14 House Republicans to support gun control. I would differ on the rationale for gun control, but I did vote in support of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. So you are running as a Democrat. I'm a heretic six times over by your reckoning. <laughs> are you running as a Democrat? No, I'm not running as a Democrat. Oh, that did, that's right. That you oppose abortion. No, that did not stop me, sir, from, uh, or that did not stop my Democratic colleagues from trying to, uh, uh, to turn me a few times. There were some, some overtures that I, I they did a rebuffed. number on you when yes. you were running for re-election you were a one-term congressman mm -hmm. the democrats quietly backed a super right conservative guy from out of state what was his name's gibbs or something mm -hmm. and so it was it was pretty you were pretty you like you're a centrist i mean i just try to be like a practical individual right i'm like all those pieces of legislation that you mentioned I read those things top to bottom. I talked to folks who knew kind of issues. Um, one comment I got from a legal person, uh, a Republican legal advisor on the uh, the same-sex marriage bill, which was the most straightforward thing imaginable, is like, hey, you know what? If uh, Oberfell is overturned, if that day comes, um, any marriages that had been performed, as long as it's between two consenting adults uh, who are, you know, yeah, two consenting adults validated by a state, uh, will be recognized by other states. Full faith and credit clause of the Constitution, right? 
straightforward. In the event that Oberfell is overturned, which it wouldn't be, and you didn't have that, it'd be absolute fucking chaos. You would have people across the board, you know, you know kids who had parents who were married, who are no longer married, um, the just utter insanity. So we had a little simple solution to that. Now that gets, you know, all of a sudden, uh, the proponents of it way overstate its impact. The detractors way overstate the downside. Uh, I mean, I just try to read the legislation and make a judgment accordingly. As we send you there to represent society. I, I mean, again, I don't know what the, the government's doing in the business of sanctifying marriage. I mean, what they should be doing is civil unions for everybody because it's contracts, mm -hmm. money, children, property. Yeah. You let taxes, your, your synagogue right. or your mosque or yeah. your church sanctify a marriage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So again, that's really centrist. That really plays in, and you know, him growing up here, moving around here, we are like that. Mm -hmm. But running as a Republican in a primary, as you just saw last year, that's a difficult trick to get to November. And once you're in November, you can see my opinion, not Karen's, not yours, but mine is the Democrats don't have shit. What they have, you saw in Kentucky, you saw it in Ohio, is abortion. And so now you're the centrist and you're going to get clobbered with abortion, sure. no exception? No, no, no. I mean, lay it out. Abortion. Yeah. Uh, I mean, let's, let's talk about the role of the federal no, government no, give us, versus just, the just states. Give us it real clean, like uh, woman's health. Uh, let me just be very clear from the okay. outset. I do not support a federal ban on abortion. You better say it again. Period. Full stop. No okay. federal ban on abortion. So it's I mean, I'm happy to walk into the details, right? But like, it, that should be something that is decided by the states, right? It's going to have to be. What happened in the state of Michigan is we went from essentially a 22-week ban. Now, obviously, there is not a person alive on the right who does not believe in exceptions for the life of the mother, no matter at what point, I right? I don't feel. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but, like that, but we went from 22 weeks in the state of Michigan. Now, Roe was overturned. Um, we go down to the 1931 law, which is basically zero, but then life of the mother. Um, that was considered far too harsh by approximately 60% of the voters in the state of Michigan. So Prop 3 passes. So we go from 22 to zero to literally no exceptions or no restrictions at any point, right? You can have, you know, beyond the way to the hospital and like good to go, right? So zero and 44 are not reasonable in that. Like the reasonable place and where I think folks who are pro-life like myself should be making the strong and impassioned case for is you have to have laws that have empathy. That's where exceptions come in. They have to be empathetic, but they also, you know, should frankly be in line with where much of the civilized world is. But our constitution leaves questions that deal with, you know, police powers, with medical issues, with health issues. They leave that to the states. And that's where you can also reduce a lot of the hyper fear, this, this, um, you know, people showing up in Washington dressed like they're coming out of uh, a handmaiden's tale, right? I mean, this this kind of fear mongering that persists, you can reduce that if you can say, hey, listen, we have this policy. It kind of works. That was but called it, Roe but, v. Wade. But, but isn't empathy and civility relative? I mean, isn't that, doesn't, sure. that, doesn't that create an issue all along the way because everybody has their own perception or perspective about what that is? Well, but also when something is more local, then you, you reduce the... Fear-mongering can live, right? And suspicion in general can live when folks are removed, when they're isolated. It's a lot easier to believe that somebody on the other side of the country is way off their rocker and doing terrible things, you know, in secret than somebody who's sitting in the same pew as you in church, right? Or somebody that you see at the water cooler, which doesn't, by the way, mean that local politics can't be the most divisive because, mm -hmm. I mean, zoning issues can get people up in arms. But it does mean that you're able to better remedy some of those consequences and take it out of the realm of the hypothetical and into reality. Okay, standpoint, Congressman. So if you're elected senator mm -hmm. and there is a piece of legislation for a national abortion ban, you stand against it. Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Well, if it did, but, that's like we, yeah. it, it might and it's a big no, deal. That, that is a power that should be living at the state level. So you would vote against it? Correct. Okay, he's on the record there. We have that. I'll just write there, Peter Meyer, no S. Oh, um, <laughs> there can be an S. Is there an apostrophe Joey or not? Joey used to, Cupcake used to work at the loading docks at, at Meyer, 
and uh, he would fill out his fulfillment papers at the end of the day, and he <laughs> wasn't quite fulfilled. <laughs> Is that right? The Money Warehouse. The Money Warehouse. Where? <laughs> yeah. In Newport, Michigan. In Newport, okay. Michigan. Nice. Right. Nice. Okay. Nice. Nice. All right, number two. Important work. I appreciate the service, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it is. It is. Logistics are the core of any enterprise. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Israel, Hamas. Yes. Country's divided on that. I, I'm not really quite sure they are, but where are you on that? Obviously, Israel has a right to defend itself. 14, 1,400 people are massacred in their beds. Okay. Is yeah, the we're, response... we're debating whether or not 40 babies were, you know, had their heads cut off or right, really we're gonna, some of them were incident. Like, is geez. the response proportional? Yes or no? I mean, the Israeli, response Israeli, from Israeli the Israeli military is and should be, we will eliminate Hamas. Now, obviously, Hamas has a policy of using civilians as human shields. They're dealing with a dense urban area. Urban combat is awful and, and bloody and vicious for all parties involved. Yep. Um, now, any any individual incidents where there are concerns that a war crime may have been committed, like, sure, have that full airing, but, you know, protected sites like a hospital lose their protected status under the Geneva having, Conventions, having under the law of that, land you're, warfare. you're a veteran. Yeah. You're a veteran of the uh, Homeland Security Committee, mm -hmm. uh, Subcommittee on Intelligence and Counterterrorism, right? Energy. So this is Michigan. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of Arabs and a lot of Muslims and a lot of Jews. Where do you... We're looking for somebody with a big brain because nobody has one. Give us, give us something. Where, where, where's Peter Meyer on this? Like, what do we? Ten thousand civilians injured. I mean, it's it's a catastrophe. What's the end game here, Mr. Meyer? Oh my God. I mean, the end game should be we want to prevent this turning into even more of a catastrophe than it already has been, right? And that has been my fear from the get go. And where the bigger concern, like obviously, you know, Gaza, you know, presents significant challenges. But if Lebanese Hezbollah gets into the mix with their 100,000 rockets that are aimed at And they're Israel, already launching them, you know that. But at least they're, I mean, I'm not like justifying what they're doing, but they're, they aren't unleashing their entire arsenal. They're keeping that in reserve. Because if, hey, yeah, if they were to do that, immediately you're talking about fatalities among Israeli civilians spiking into the tens of thousands or, or, you know, or greater. Uh, very quickly, a, a, a rapid conflict that could escalate that would you know, bring us back to the dark days in the 1970s uh, or 60s in the Middle East, where you have, you know, um, you know, alliances among Arab countries that right now, you know, basically before October 7th, we're normalizing relations with Israel, we're focusing on economic development, uh, we're looking at, you know, what is the prime axis in the Middle East, which is not Israel versus, you know, the Arab countries, but is Iran and their kind of malign Shia influence against the Sunni based countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council. Right. But, so we okay, we have, is it time to negotiate in Ukraine? Yes or no? I, you should always be open to negotiations. Okay, because it seems to me that when we were looking back a year and a half ago, I'm surprised the Russians aren't in Kiev. So in a way, it's, that's and, and a frankly win. miraculous. You know the way the Ukrainians, who have you know a country a tenth, well not a tenth, they're like a sixth the size of Russia, right? They have you know Russia has the second largest military in the world, and the Ukrainians were you know twelfth or. 14th. I get the history lesson, yeah. man. I'm asking you yeah. this: Is there an honorable and acceptable way to stop? that warfare and us funding all of it oh i mean do you support negotiations now well yes absolutely okay. but it, i mean but let me just say real quickly i mean the way the war ends and could end tomorrow is if putin stopped invading ukraine well right? he's <laughs> not going to <laughs> no. you know because they speak russian in ukraine it was part of the russian empire in 1685 man i mean okay now we have g in san francisco he was you know he was met by his um protege gavin newsom mm -hmm. who cleaned up the streets of san francisco he did. an unimaginable act prior and he yeah. you know got the idea of lockdowns from xi can you believe that okay anyway having said that they're buzzing taiwan i'm not hearing anything about that iran yeah. is on the move there's an axis over here does all of this have its root in the humiliating and ridiculous withdrawal from afghanistan of which you were criticized for getting on a plane and trying to get people out is it time for new leadership on the world stage? And are you the guy to help 
No, I mean, if you, if you project weakness, weakness will be what is accepted, right? And what will be taken for granted. If you are overly logical in the way that you respond to world events, right? And this is this was my problem with the Obama administration, who, if you will remember, that was when uh, Putin seized Crimea uh, and parts of the Donbass was under the Biden during the sorry the Obama administration. Um, if if somebody knows, if your enemy knows that they can poke you a thousand times and you're not going to punch them, you are going to get poked to death. Right. But if they think that if you poke them, you will punch them square between the eyes, they might not poke you. Right. So there is a danger to be overly rational and overly logical in international affairs. Um, frankly, the, when Trump, you know, smoked Qasem Soleimani, I, I was on a, I had a chat with a couple of buddies, you know, who some were still in, some were out, you know, who were all kind of involved. And I was like, hey, are you hearing this? I'm hearing this. Oh, it can't be that. Had to have been like a number two guy. Well, I'm so like, reminded the Supreme Military yeah, ruler. Had of a, yeah, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, kind of the, um, the, the their you know, version of like the CIA and special forces mixed together that, you know, messed things up all throughout the region, you know, been supporting Bashar al-Assad when he's massacring a half million, you know, civilians of his own, um, killing far more people, by the way, with Russia's help in than Syria. ISIS did. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you, you need to do some things that are outside the playbook that are going to upset that apple cart um, so that your adversaries don't look at you as someone who can be taken advantage of. Give us of. one. Give us one one outside the box idea you have for getting the world back in order. Uh, I mean, very quickly start to look at who your enemies and who your adversaries and if they're your, um, or sorry, your, who your enemies, who are your allies, if they're your their allies, you know, yeah, hold their feet to the fire on places where they should be, right? I mean, Europe should absolutely be stepping up more. If if they're too squeamish to offer military assistance to Ukraine, then they should be offering economic assistance, right? If they are, you know, having side deals with the Russians, you know, to buy off some of their oil, you got to cut that shit out, right? Ditto when it comes to Iran, ditto when it comes to, you know, countries like Qatar that want to have it both ways, right? right? Like the Qataris hosting Hamas, you know, it's one thing if you want to be the neutral mediator, but if you're on the side and still a non- uh, a non-NATO major ally of the United States, that's going to come with some responsibilities. I don't care how many F-35s you buy, right? Like there are ways in which we should be respected by our friends. We should be feared by our enemies. And right now our friends don't respect us. Our enemies don't fear us. And that's a big fucking problem. So why? Why not? Is our leadership or lack thereof? Can you I, I think the problem is you have these these interagency processes where right where a statement gets watered down and watered down and everyone is, is clutching their pearls and wringing their hands and saying oh geez I don't know tone this down like you can't bureaucratize a lot of this stuff right you need to have that person to person interaction I, I mean I have talked to folks. Um, through kind of my, my past connections who are reaching out and saying, hey, we're trying to like get a hold of the government kind of on this issue. You know, can you try to convey this message or that message? And it's it's astounding to me how how frankly sometimes more rational I, I am having to explain, listen, it's not that they necessarily disagree with you. It's that this is stuck in an administrative process, right? And so that is our problem, right? Government can be so much of the problem, especially in the realm of foreign affairs, when it is ultimately going to be individuals who are establishing relationships, not bureaucracy. We, we need somebody to make a decision and, and, yes. and, and have some place that so, we're going, man. And, and this, so this is how I describe the difference between the Trump administration and the Biden administration. Trump might go into a meeting. He might Wait, say- Wait, running for president? No, 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 no. Wait, no, 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 no we no, talking no. about the Senate? Or we, yeah, that's what I'm no, saying no. in terms of leadership. No, no, I mean, no, without. No, you're running no. for Senate, you're not running for president. Oh. Let me live. No, Senator, no, Senator. No, no, no. I mean, no. Congressman. I mean, right, right. former Congressman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Failed Congressman. The, right. Yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> not you're being hard on yourself. No. The failed only, Congressman. So, well, got we got a headline here. But I'll be better in the Senate. No, come on, man. That was good enough. You're learning, right? You're learning, man. You learn the ways of. Okay, look. Yes. The southern border, mm -hmm. it's a fucking disaster. Disa oh. I covered the border. Oh my God. And I don't care. My friends go, man, he took a hard right, uh, lurch to the right. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. You've been down there. It's, oh, yeah. a, it's a mass human humanitarian crisis. Now, we've got, I lived through 9-11. It only took 19 motherfuckers to kill 3,000 of my neighbors. Three, friends of mine. Yeah. Okay. We got hundreds coming through on the terror watch list. When you were in Congress on the Homeland Security Committee, Alyssa Slotkin, if you were to get the Republican nomination, assuming she got the Democratic nomination, she was also on the Homeland Security Committee. Never returned a call. 
I'm just going to do the off the record. It's on the record. Sorry, dude. You did return my calls. When we got a portly guy from Lebanon who married a Venezuelan chick and then it came up here, we let him in because we didn't want him to get COVID. We gave him a bus ticket to Dearborn and now he's lost in the wind. So you and Slotkin, she worked for the National Security Council. She was in charge of the Iran-Iraq portfolio. Thank you for ISIS, madam. I call her Baghdad Betty. She's <laughs> welcome to be on here. I, I call them all that. I call them all what they are. She signs non-disclosure agreements with corporations. Her staff signs them with Chinese companies. Do I have your word that you will respond to the questions? of the people of Michigan, that you will not be a corporate stooge, you will sign no non-disclosure agreements, and you get that border in order, yes or no, on all of those. There's only uh, one answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've done anything but that, Charlie, yes. Mm. Mark said, uh -oh. Mark, in trouble. who's a libtard, he's still a registered Republican, so, so I've been told. got sick of him, went totally left. <laughs> Sorry to do this, Mark. He goes, I'm sure what Mark. He, he's, he's, he's thinking. I'm an adult. I can handle it. I, yeah, I, okay. <laughs> does, does this guy, does he interest you in terms of your vote? Well, I told you earlier, very much so. Yeah, because he's a centrist. I mean, I'm not nuts about the abortion thing, but I think you answer that pretty fairly and leave it to the states. I mean, that, that, that really is the only fear, but everything else to me is a little, little more important. I support I nobody. I remain neutral. I reserve the right to run myself. I'm just sizing you up. Well, that's fair. Okay. That's fair. Let's, now we said we'd get you out of here. So let me put it this way. Senate don't mean shit to the regular person. Because like when Gary Peters, the nobody even knows who he is. 60% of the people didn't yeah. know who he was. Yeah. Right? No. Who's who's leaving? Her name's I've Debbie learned it's Stadler. good if they don't know who you are, right? When everybody knows your name, I mean, it could be because you're on Cheers or it could be... Uh... So it's basically you're our emissary. Like you, you, you like... The president of Michigan in Washington, the president of Michigan is the governor, the president of the United States, the president, and you're our like national and foreign emissary. So why do you want to be senator? What would you bring? And I'll give you like something specific. Mm -hmm. The beautiful Great Lakes. There's what, eight states and another country that share them. Mm -hmm. You could put together a group to protect them. That would make me tingle. And here's another one. The power. The power is awful. Mm -hmm. It goes out. It's also terrible in California, and it's terrible in Texas. Would you put a consortium of senators together to guarantee us power, like so my mother's not freezing her ass off every Christmas? No, I mean, and we saw that during the polar vortex, right? Like there was a fear, like, yeah, we got an ice storm, lines are down, electricity's out, but it's fine, we still got heat oh shit, like we might have some of our, our natural gas storage facilities where the valves are frozen and we can't get the natural gas out. And that's when everything goes from bad to this is catastrophe and people are freezing to death in their own homes, right? I mean, you should never have to wonder if your energy is, is it should be reliable, number one, it should be affordable, number two. And if we can make it clean, that's fantastic. But if you make it clean and not affordable and not reliable, people are gonna die. Well, we have a problem, <laughs> which is you're a capitalist. <clears throat> You're a businessman. Your family's a big business concern. The problem in California, Texas, mm -hmm. and Michigan is we took a public utility mm -hmm. and we here we semi-privatized it. It's for profit. Yeah. And in that way, it's not reliable. And something something that serious, I don't know if you just leave it to the vagaries of the market. No, but you also throw a bunch of mandates on. Right, like right now, our state legislature will have passed out and will get signed into law if it hasn't already. I mean, it's literally... I guess it's Wednesday, so maybe the governor's already signed it. Um, it was the it was a sixty percent mandate to hit renewables by I believe twenty thirty, right? You know it doesn't count under the renewables? What? Nuclear. Right. Know, Which right. is our cleanest, cheapest, most reliable source. It's on demand. It doesn't care if the wind is blowing, it doesn't care if the sun is shining, right? It is essential to meet whatever green energy goals you have. It is essential. And that gets shoved to the sideline. Now, Governor Whitmer, to her credit, has been trying to get the Palisades plant in Southwest Michigan kind of back up and running. But like, it's just absolutely insane to me how 
and this, this is frankly where I think a lot of the Democrats come down, they, they take that crisis, right? They take climate change, they take fears and concerns around that, and then they use it as an excuse, not to necessarily solve the problem, but to devote, devote to sell out the special interest, DTE, the power's going out now, now it's going to oh, be wind and solar. Well, it's at, only sunny 90 days a year. How many folks in Lansing have spouses who are working with renewable energy projects that are going to have tens of millions of dollars of state contracts. How, what percentage of the Lansing representatives take money from DTE? Like 99% of them. Yeah. Like the governor oh. just took three quarters of a million quiet dollars. Ford and GM and Stellantis are telling you we're done with the, the electric future. It's so, not working. So how so do you how do, how do you propose that you really make a difference when bureaucracy and all this is so entrenched? Yeah, what are you going to do? Like, like, what can you really do? Certainly, your voice makes a difference. Yeah. A visibility makes a difference. But what difference? Yes, what's Pete Meyer's really first hundred days in office? No, believe me, there's a lot of things that'd be easier, and I do mm -hmm. not discount the possibility right. that Justice Gorsuch will have a majority opinion that will do away with mm -hmm. the, the or will reinvigorate what's called the non-delegation doctrine. The Congress cannot take its lawmaking ability and essentially hand that to the administrative state, or that we will have a, a far more narrowing interpretation of the Commerce Clause, you know, undoing Wickard v. Filburn and all of these kind of old cases that made it so that basically anything could become a federal issue, right? We need a federal government that's focused on what only the federal government can and should be doing. And we need states to be finding solutions for all the rest of those matters so that they can actually look at what works, compare and contrast. If it works, great, continue it. If it fails, get rid of it. I didn't hear nothing there, did you? I didn't, I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear nothing. I'm trying to offer solutions here, sir. <laughs> solutions. If, if Trump runs, yeah. are you going to support Yes. Him? No. Last question. Trump. <laughs> Good one, Karen. <laughs> Fucking great. <laughs> Last question. Yeah. If Trump ends up on the ballot, are you going to support him? I mean, Trump. he was just, he's, he, he can he can make it on to Michigan if he gets in the game. Man, my but... cup runneth dry. Um, <laughs> Get the man I, a beer. We got no. an extra minute. <laughs> Bonus round. No, listen, I, I fully expect to support the Republican nominee. Like, is am I going to be thrilled going into mm -hmm. the, the booth? That's a different question. Much of but, us wouldn't be. No, I mean, but at the end of the day, um, I mean, I am firmly committed to making Joe Biden a one-term president. Like, if I am a single-issue voter, I'm a single-issue voter on Afghanistan, and I still feel the sharp, hot knife of that betrayal in my gut every day. Yeah, man. You know, just as, as your beer is coming, we say goodbye. <laughs> um Thank you very much. Not, not quite. I wanted to ask about the logo. That Wait, was quite on, genius of you to use yeah. your family logo for your campaign. I can't about that. What? It's it's regular people hour. There's, there's Did you hear me, Pete? Or there's you just ignore me? press secretary there going, don't do it. You already said F twice. I don't Two years and two Fs. I understand, but you, did you hear me? I heard you. I heard you. So no, you're no. ignoring so th me. That was our initial logo. Okay. Well, no, he was, oh, there was crosstalk, right? There was Sorry. crosstalk. Okay. That was the initial logo. I don't like to um, be ignored. You know, we'll, be, we'll be kind of rolling as we're going along the campaign. Okay. But, uh, that was pretty, no, you know, we liked the logo. I, well, yeah, was, everybody was, thought it was pretty, a pretty great, genius move. Great feedback from folks in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, there were people in like California who were like, oh my God, that thing is ugly. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know. It. They don't get it. No. You know, when I see that Meyer logo mm -hmm. and I see you, I'm thinking, nice cans. <laughs> <laughs> They're not dented, sir. Do we have your word to lower prices for everybody? Higher like standards. free stuff for everybody? <laughs> An enhanced you mistake which party I'm program. in. Not that far left. Uh, <laughs> there was somebody saying that like the Emperks program was uh, functioning as like a political conduit. It's like, okay, I'm not really what? sure. How? Um, I, but you got to enjoy. You got to enjoy the... Did you get permission to use the logo? Yeah, that's what I wanted There's to no know. There's no trademark around that. The There's trademark no trademark going 2020. <laughs> go, so, go somebody register. get online there and get that Meyer thing real quick. <laughs> Let's change our logo. Then, <laughs> then like that. Whitmer, he can steal our stuff. We own the, the Meyer thing and then and he'll steal I it. Thought, and then I thought there would be some infringement concerns there. No. Well, but again, if that was our initial logo, we will be... Believe me, so the challenge with that logo, actually, just to be really candid, is I have no idea what font was used. And I've mm -hmm. tried a bunch of different like AI font identification things, ask folks. I think it was like specifically made, which the challenge then is, OK, so I want to say Peter Meyer. All right, let me make that P. Wait, OK, do I have to like take the R, shave it down? Believe me, I've spent way too much time. I'm, I'm like running for Senate right now. I should, should not be. hire some people. This is say, no, an awfully thin people. campaign. Listen, He's doing I, his own graphic. I do it myself, right? I do it myself. I got an Illustrator, you know, Adobe Illustrator subscription. He got his sleeve rolled up and he yeah. does it himself. This yeah. is going to play in yeah. Escanaba, bro. Yeah. Listen, um, thanks. Uh, no, you'll come back as the campaign gets rolling. Uh, and again, 
everybody that's running is welcome and i i, I would think you, you need to, you need to come through this program because this is where the regular people hang um good luck peter meyer running for united states senate we'll see you next tuesday <laughs> <laughs> what Paul Financial is putting more money in your pocket with our exclusive no-fee home loan. That's right, you pay no fees to Hall Financial. So in addition to our nearly 6,000 five-star reviews and our average nine-day turn time from application to close, you now pay no fees to Hall Financial. This is gonna save you up to $2,500 in fees that you'd normally pay to the other guys. Start saving now, 866-CALL-HALL or chat with us at callhallfirst.com. I'm Grace Carroll, and I'm third generation of American Coney Island. People say Detroit's a comeback city. I say, where you been? We've been here for over 100 years. My family's been here on the same corner, serving our famous proprietary American Coney Island hot dog. So like always, we're keeping things fresh, updated, and new. We'd love to have you come downtown and visit us, but if you can't, you can always go to AmericanConeyIsland.com, order a Coney kit, get it delivered fresh right to your door. And now, what all the guys in Downriver have been waiting for, it's the No Bullshit News Hours football analyst, Joey Buns. Joey Buns, he's Joey Buns. He calls the pass, he calls the run, Joey Buns. Freshly baked just for your wiener or a patty in between her, Joey Buns. Joey Buns. It's Joey Buns. Joey, how you doing, man? The Flying Lion. How you doing, brother? Oh, great, great, man. All right, 4138 Lions Road win, your main takeaway. It was nerve-wracking, but the offense showed up. The defense was a little weak. Like I told you before, they need a pass rusher. Hopefully when Houston gets back in the middle of December, it'll solve that problem. How many times did that camel go for it on fourth down? Oh, God, what was it, four times? Four times. Look at that. The guy knows everything. Four times. Big set of balls, this guy. Oh, big time. You've got to carry him around in a wheelbarrow. wheelbarrow. Yeah. yeah, you've seen that too, huh? <laughs> yes, I did. i seen that, fit, that photo too. Here, here's the deal. Um, on, on, on the defense, the interior of that D-line looks soft to me. Very soft. Very soft. Okay. They're and not getting any pressure at all. This is the third game they've given up 37, 38 points, dude. Yes. Yes, I, that's a problem. I, I don't think I don't think we're getting to Vegas with the, with a defense like that. You told me, Joey Buns, that the best off-season signing that the Lions made, free agency, was Cam Sutton. Cam Sutton, yeah. The guy was garbage. Eleven million a year, two pass interference, four down in the end zone, and then he left his jock strap on that that fourth down, and Allen went right by him for the yeah. touchdown. Allen did that to the whole team. Come on, nobody, there was nobody out there that could stop them. They Why didn't were, they double him, Joe? They did double him. They did double him. They did double him. They had one, one guy down low and a safety in the back. He kept sliding through both of them and getting around them both because they were both too slow. They didn't react to the ball fast enough. Does that toast your buns, Joe? Yes, it does. <laughs> toast the buns. But the thing you got to look, look at is Jared Goff is playing at a high level. With a defense like this, and him able to put up the points that he's putting up, anything is possible. He's in his contract here, is he not? Yes, he is. Should they, they extend him right now? They should be extending him right Look now. Look at the camera and, and tell the head yes, off. Absolutely. Extend him now. You cannot let that guy go. Um, Laporta, the tight end, a rookie of the year candidate? Yeah. Okay, Dan Campbell, uh, coach of the year? Co halfway? Yeah, he's on that road. He's on that road. Anybody do a better job this year than Dan Cam? I don't think so. No. Not um, An Anzalone looks pretty, pretty damn impressive to me. He's underrated. Underrated linebacker, and I'm glad we signed him. And he can cover guys. He covers guys. He's fast. He goes sideline to sideline. There's, there's no stopping Anzalone. He's on a, he's on a roar right now. When they, when they, when they lined up for that kick, for the game-winning kick. Were you thinking about our conversation two weeks ago? A little bit, yeah, yeah. We don't have a great kicker, uh, but this guy's good from inside the 40s. Hey, he did, that was the right call to go for it on fourth down there, eat up the clock, and don't leave them any time. If you'd have kicked that field goal, 
there's a good chance they would have came down and scored the winning touchdown. You couldn't stop them all day. What makes you think you're going to stop them in the last minute? Hey, Calvin, this is Calvin DeMop over here. Calvin, 41-38, what, what do you make of that, Calvin? Hey, no comment. No, hey, Calvin, <laughs> Calvin. No comment. Come, come here a second, come here. Oh, he lost, he lost, he, oh. Yeah, he made bets and lost. He made bets and lost. No comment. Hey, Cal. No, listen. What was the what was the winning uh, pick four lottery number? It was the same score as uh, the final score was. It was the final same as the Lions' final score. It was 4138. 4138 was the winning lotto number. It's got to be the year. It's got to be the year, bro. Chicago Bears, give me give you a quick take. What the Lions need to do? Uh, what's your prediction? This is going to be a test on the defense again. Fields is back. He's playing. He's a running quarterback. He burned us last year. They have to contain this guy. If they contain him, they'll win. Load the box? Challenge him to throw? Absolutely. Why do I got to do all this, your work? He's, he's, a, he's a decent passer, but not great. And he's not a, he not a big league and thrower. Our defense just got to get to him. Hutchinson's got to break through. He's got to do something this week. I, I'm not, Hutchinson, man, he's, he's, he's around the ball. He's around the ball, he just hasn't gotten home. Yeah, but I mean, when you got two guys on you, you expect him to get home or is it like, that's, that's, that's how we started the day, which is the interior the looked line. a little soft. They today. needed another guy. They needed to pick up another end. Oh, that old Dominican Sue middle of the line thing's coming back. You sound um, smart. I've been saying that. Dominican's sitting at home. We drafted him. If you give him a call, we're winning. I'm sure he'll come fill that middle. I notice your buns are kosher. No. Yeah, right there. Okay, that's for kosher. kosher. No, that's for kosher. It's just nice for a Catholic boy. Yeah, I did, never noticed it. He well, knows more about the Lions than his own buns. <laughs> that's Joey Buns. What's, give me a score. Lions 34, Chicago 17. Joey Buns, he's Joey Buns. He calls the pass, he calls the run, Joey Buns. Freshly baked just for your wiener or a patty in between or Joey Buns. Joey Buns. Let's go Lions. Don't ruin this Thanksgiving. We'll see you next Thursday. See you next Thursday.